Stephen Miles, the Queensland Premier, giving an update on that situation in far north Queensland. Queensland Disaster Management Committee meeting at Kedron Park at the State Disaster Coordination Centre there. Uh, 35 localities in the far north remain isolated in the wake of the flooding disaster that followed ex-tropical cyclone Jasper. Uh, police have gained access to many of those communities and not identified any critically injured persons. That really is the miracle of this event, an event so big and as far as we know at this stage, no loss of life. We do continue to hold grave fears for that 85-year-old man who went missing in Dagara, who was reported missing from Dagara. Uh, police have accessed his property uh, but still not been able to locate him. The QPS report that they're no longer receiving life-threatening, life-endangering calls for service, uh, but a number of vessels remain uh, remain on call for if they are required. The mass evacuation of Woodjil, Woodjil and Dagara continues moving that community, uh, large numbers of that community from Woodjil, Woodjil to Cooktown. Uh, 97 people were evacuated yesterday. Those two Chinooks, I understand, are in the air uh, now, moving personnel into position and removing residents back to Cooktown. The three evacuation centres that remain open are in Mossman, Edmonton and Cooktown. In total, there's 62 people currently in those centres, uh, 43 at Cooktown, uh, largely those evacuated residents. Today, we have even more resources flooding into the state's far north to do damage assessments and to relieve fatigued officers. We continue to rely on the ADF and uh, particularly those Chinooks uh, are allowing us to get personnel into those isolated communities. A number of roads remain closed. The Bruce Highway between Townsville and Cairns uh, remains open. The Captain Cook Highway between Cairns and Smithfield is open, but drivers are urged to take care. The uh, access road to Yorkies Knob is also open, but again, drivers are urged to take care. Uh, access to Holloways and Machen's Beach is restricted to emergency vehicles and local traffic only. There continues to be flooded roads, and so they can't even be assessed until those floodwaters recede. Again, we say to anyone driving around the re region, if it's flooded, forget it. You're not only taking a risk with your own life, but you're making the job of our first responders even harder. Police are very closely monitoring looting in areas that have been affected uh, by the flooding. There's high visibility policing in those areas. At the end of the day, there is nothing more loathsome, nothing less Queensland than looting, and our police uh, will uh, use all uh, use all of their resources necessary to keep uh, those residents who've been affected by uh, the flooding safe. Uh, we haven't had any reports of incidents with crocodiles, but it remains a concern. Uh, there are crocodiles in these parts and in these waters. Uh, to those who remain uh, without power or without uh, access, uh, we uh, know that uh, it is a difficult and a frustrating time. Uh, please know that we're doing everything that we can uh, to get to you and to get you the supplies that you need. Uh, today, we're formally announcing that the Queensland Fire and Emergency Service Deputy Commissioner Mike Wassing will be uh, the deputy uh, the deputy coordinator for the recovery phase. Uh, here in the state's far north from ex-tropical cyclone Jasper. Uh, he'll be responsible for coordinating dis disaster recovery operations, working with Jake Elwood from the QRA. Uh, Jake is best placed to describe that role because it's the role he played for us uh, in the uh, southeast Queensland flooding disaster. Commissioner Wassing, Deputy Commissioner Wassing, uh, has extensive experience. He played pivotal roles in the 2009 Black Sunday fires in Victoria and the 2017 Tropical Cyclone Debbie response. 80% uh, of homes and businesses that lost power are expected to be re reconnected by tomorrow evening, 90% by the 23rd, and our crews are working just as hard as they can to get as many people as they can reconnected before Christmas Eve. We're also announcing today that we've launched uh, an appeal, a charitable appeal for Australians, uh, Australians who want to contribute 
to those who've been affected by the flooding disaster. Uh, we're working with the Australian Red Cross, the Salvation Army, Uniting Care, St Vincent de Paul and Give It on this appeal. The Queensland Government has kick-started the appeal with a contribution of $1.5 million. These are trusted charities who we know will be able to get these funds to those who need it most. Uh, we've asked to give it to focus some of the $100,000 we've provided to them on any children who might have lost toys that had been put aside for Santa. Uh, this is a chance for us to make sure that their Christmas is a little bit brighter than it would have been otherwise. And finally, uh, Minister Watt will outline uh, disaster recovery funding arrangements that have been agreed between the Australian and Queensland governments to provide loans in support of uh, primary producers and businesses, but I'll let him make that announcement. Thank you.